Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the fair use, fair dealings guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. We're going to jump right in. We have a lot of new stories to cover. So this is basically just a compilation of a lot of new stories and what I think about them and a couple of small little updates. So let's just jump in with both feet and go, shall we? Let's go. To start with, I remember showing you guys this tweet from Omid Scobie where suddenly, while he wants to commemorate the Queen's impressive reign, we should take care of things in England before we do that. The money could be better spent elsewhere. And I believe I said to you guys, you know, I find it interesting that he didn't say that when Harry and Meghan were getting married or she was spending millions on clothes or that Harry and Meghan want free taxpayer funded security. Well, great minds think alike, because Dan Wooten came out and basically said with the same tweet, how come Scobie has no problem with Harry and Meghan receiving free security provided by the British police, right? He doesn't want to celebrate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee until other things are handled, but he has no problem letting the taxpayer money go to support two people who are no longer working royals and who don't represent the Queen. Hmm. Next up, the Daily Mail did a little blurb about Catherine, the Duchess of Cambridge, and her visit to Denmark. And I think they encapsulated her perfectly. They pointed out she's enthusiastic about her job, that she's on a crusade to give children a better start in life, that she's always smiling, never stuffy, and relishes in her duty, that she's the perfect ambassador and a powerful force for good, and a credit to the country. And I completely agree. This letter came to me from a follower and I found it very interesting and I'm putting it up because this person apparently called Procter & Gamble because of an issue with a product and he had stopped buying anything from Procter & Gamble as I did as well after they endorsed the Sussexes. So he mentioned their mini boycott uh, to the person on the phone, customer service, and the person on the other end did not mince words, apparently, and she made it sound like she was just as disgusted and said that Procter & Gamble is no longer in a partnership with Harry and Meghan or something to that uh, effect. So I find it interesting that they said that, and come to think of it, I have not heard one word about Procter & Gamble since they came out with their announcement. I wonder if it's another failed venture. Hmm. All right, moving on. Going back to Harry and Meghan and this failed grab for attention, I guess I probably should have noted, and I did not, and that's totally my bad, that the pictures were not released on the day that they were taken. Remember, they did the same thing when Kate and William were in Pakistan. They did something I don't even remember anymore. And they held the pictures until Kate and William were on the royal tour. Same thing here. One major thing I want to point out to you guys is that in the United States, there are no gun control laws, no real ones. Anybody can walk into any store and buy any weapon. Sometimes there's a waiting period, sometimes there isn't. They could buy a high-powered rifle and shoot these two from any vantage point. They don't look that worried about it. So why aren't they worried about it in a country with no gun control, but they are worried about it in the UK? Hmm. Now with that, a video just popped up on Twitter showing them at dinner and it explains some things. First of all, you can hear the beach in the background. So it was probably very windy and cold, which is why there's plastic down and why there's a heater behind Eugenie. But the point is that a paparazzi person was able to be on the beach and tape this from multiple angles for over a minute and there's no security there to stop them. Get my point? So here's a little snippet of the video. Watch this. The pictures were taken by Backgrid, and the best way I can describe that to people so that you'll understand is that it's private paparazzi. Does that make sense? You call them when you want to be papped. 
And I do think it's true that most people don't know the ins and outs of how paid publicity works. But this comment from the Jones Zone really resonated with me. And it falls right in with what happened because social media is full of misinformation. The majority of it is condoned, directed, manufactured, promoted, all by them. And it doesn't work. And they haven't figured that out, although I'm not sure why. So the articles are coming out by Jack Royston. Remember, he's a massive Meghan Markle lover that Harry and Meghan are being urged to sue over the pictures that were taken at the restaurant. The problem is, people, you can't sue for pictures when you're the one who called the paparazzi. This is no different than when Harry and Meghan did not sue the paparazzi for taking the full facial photo of Archie as he supposedly was being carried to nursery school. You never heard another word about it. There was absolutely no lawsuit, and that would be because it was a setup, okay? In my humble opinion, of course. And talking about setup, I saw this on Twitter and I found it very interesting. Tamarindos pointed out that there's a very interesting relationship between Megan and Jeff Rayner. Um, he's the one who took the photos of Megan's father that she was so against saying that, you know, he got paid. But then she's still calling him and using him for set up pap shots. So it makes you kind of wonder, did she set her own dad up since she's cutting off family? interesting thought. Oh my God. Yes, Harry has filed another complaint against the Daily Mail. Now, initially reports were coming out that people could not figure out what he was suing about this time, which, you know, which title, what has he done that's really upset people. Nobody seems to know what's happening. And then this article came out. Apparently, it's being reported that the lawsuit has to do with something that was reported in the Daily Mail about issues of security. There's a lot of uh, information floating around that um, he's suing because it was reported that he did not offer to pay for the security uh, when supposedly he's claiming now that he did. I think it'll be very interesting to see where that goes. Let's not forget that part of Harry's argument is that he is in the direct line of succession. So even if he's not working for the royal family, the UK taxpayer should still be covering his security. Seriously, the nerve of this guy. Angela Levin was like, does he really think he's got a chance to be king? Yeah, because let me tell you, if something did happen to the royal family, in my opinion, and he tried to step in as king, I think the monarchy would be abolished immediately. There's no way after his behavior anybody would accept him as king. Now, remember, they have not sued about that picture of Archie's face, you know, the one that was posted right before Louis's birthday picture. And Countess Commonwealth pointed out that Harry and Meghan still haven't launched any legal action against the libel, against the Times for their report on bullying. You know, you can't sue when things are true. Yep. All Things Royal pointed out that uh, the amount of time that Harry and Meghan spend on lawsuits is unbelievable. And that would probably explain why they have no time for Netflix or Spotify. Which brings up the interesting point, since these two are so litig litigious, I have trouble saying it, since they like to sue everybody, who's going to want to deal with them? You know, I, who's going to want to, knowing that if they have to break the deal with them because they're not doing their part of it, they could be sued. Like, really? All right, moving on to our next story. So the stories were coming out saying that Harry would not be attending Prince Philip's memorial service. And now the articles are coming out that he still may attend by himself. People, all right, this will be like the 300th time I've said it. Megan and the children will never return to the UK. Megan will never return and she will never let Harry take those kids without her. It's never going to happen. It has nothing to do with security. But I believe what Tess said, if it's a televised event, he'll be there. But if it's a private family gathering, he won't. But what Allison said had me spitting my coffee out. Allison, I had to clean my keyboard because of you. If he steps one foot into the house of the Lord, he'll be struck down by lightning for being Satan's helper. <laughs> All right, moving on to our next story. We said that when Catherine took over the rugby, that there could be some problems in the Cambridge house. And here it comes, because apparently this coming Saturday, 
the Duke's team and the Duchess's team are going head to head. And these two are so competitive. I'll be watching for sure. As competitive as they are, could you imagine what's going to be going on in the stands? <laughs> I'm looking forward to the pictures. Like I really am super duper looking forward to them. Lots of information and you know I need your comments. What do you think about Omid wanting to give taxpayer funded security to Harry and Meghan but not really celebrate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee? What do you think is happening with Procter & Gamble? What do you guys think about the attention grab thing at the beach with Harry and Meghan? What do you think about the new lawsuit that's been filed by Harry again against one of the UK newspapers? And what do you all think about the upcoming rugby match? I, for one, am excited. I know I won't be able to watch it live, but I'll be on YouTube afterwards looking it up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you've already hit it, double check to make sure you're still subscribed. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on Getter. You can email me. And for those who have donated to my coffee fund, thank you so much. And as always, you guys have a great day.